Hello everyone, it's Marvelous Melanin here and welcome back to my channel. Um, so today I'm just doing a review of Bay of the Lumix G7. And first I'm going to get started with the pros and cons, go into detail from there, and then I'm going to um, compare it with video tests and pictures to other devices that I have used previously on my channel. Right now I am using my iPad, which I don't think I've ever used to record a video on my channel because I think it has the worst quality of them all. I just want to start off by saying that I am not a professional photographer or videographer, 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 yeah. I just do this as a hobby. I'm like a beginner vlogger, so... If you're looking for professional advice and opinion, then this probably isn't the video for you guys. I'll also have links in the description of me using this camera because I actually um, used it in maybe like one or two videos that has already been posted on my channel. Any other videos that I have with this camera, I'll just keep on like telling you in the description if I use what camera I use to record because I know that's very helpful information. When I was looking for a camera, I was definitely looking to see what cameras were YouTubers using because some of them have better quality than others, you know, noticeably. And yeah. So I'll have the price and where I got it from in the description as well. Because right now, I know I got it from eBay, but I can't remember the company that I got it from. So yeah, I got mine as an open box just so it would be cheaper. But I also didn't want to get it completely used because the life is probably going to be less and less is lightly used than if you get it, you know, new or close to new. Let me get into the pros and cons of everything. So the first pro of this camera is the design of the camera. I'll go more into that later. The next one is how flexible this camera is. What I mean by flexible is obviously not like physically flexible, but because it has so many like dials and it has progr programmable functions. Another pro of this camera is that it has a 180 degree flip out screen as you guys can see me playing with and I definitely was looking for this when I was looking for a vlogging camera. You definitely want to be able to see A if you're recording or not that's really important. B if you're in focus or not and like how much battery life you have. And there has been plenty of times I recorded on this Minolta device right here and did not know that I was not even recording and wasted a lot of time re, you know, re-record like 20 minutes worth of footage because I thought I was recording. Also, another pro to this camera is the video quality. I think the video quality is great. Like it records up to 4K and it just looks really sharp and the colors look pretty true to life. And the last pro of this is it has an audio jack. That's the last pro. So you can put in an external microphone so you can boost your sound quality. I really like the internal audio that this has but I also like that it has an option for an external mic because eventually I will get to buying an external microphone. So let's get into the cons. The first con about this and it's a major con is the autofocus kind of lags. Another con is the image stabilization on this. Now the image stabilization on this is probably because the lens that I have does not have image stabilization. So it is kind of like a fixable problem, but it's going to cost more money. But the fact that it doesn't have image stabilization kind of sucks because this wouldn't be really good for people who are walking, you know, they're vlogging as they walk or whatnot. You know, this isn't going to have good stabilization like the GoPro Hero, you know, those have really, really, really good Im image stabilization or even the Osmo that has really good stabilization. In general, the action cameras seem to have pretty good image stabilization because you know that's what they're really for. They're for action shots. So for me, it's not a, you know, it's not a complete bummer that it doesn't have image stabilization, but I know for other vloggers it is because most of my um, talks and most of my videos are usually sitting down, so I'm fine, but I know that is important for a lot of other vloggers and YouTubers. So let's first talk about the design of this camera. So it's very, very small and it's very, very lightweight. Now, if you're comparing it to this thing, yeah, it's not as small and lightweight, but it will definitely fit in a purse, especially if you take the lens off and like put them in your purse. I like that part about it because it's very portable. It's lightweight compared to like a DSLR camera. Those are really heavy and they're really hard to transport. And it is kind of plasticky, you know. It feels nice though to the hand, even though it's kind of plasticky. Like the lens is definitely completely like plastic all around it. 
and the body is plasticky but it feels really good i really like the um handle thing right here material that won't slip from your hands if you know what i mean and the only kind that i have about the design aspect of it is i really kind of don't like i don't know if you can see the top of it but it just kind of looks like it's greasy or wet or something like it looks like i i ate a bucket of chicken from kfc and then put my hands all over it and rubbed it on there that's what it looks like to me so i personally don't care for that part but other than that everything is nice it has a it has a hot shoe mount up here um a microphone slash audio in jack right here and um the flip out screen which is really nice really important in fact i'll turn it on for you guys just so you guys can see can y'all see Another important thing to mention is that the screen on this device, ooh, my bad. The screen on this device is touch screen. Ooh, my bad, guys. I'm just trying to show y'all it's touch screen. I'm gonna click the menu button here. And I'm gonna, you know, scroll down for y'all. It's touch screen, guys, which is awesome because, you know, I don't know, touch screen is just a lot more convenient, you know, and it's a lot easier to manage than all these buttons. So I like the touchscreen aspect of it. This camera has a 16 megapixel sensor. It has a micro four thirds sensor. And originally I thought this would perform pretty bad in low light because the sensor is pretty small, but it actually, you know, has pretty impressive low lights. And I will put a picture of its low lights performance at the end. And when like when talking about like megapixels and stuff, I think 16 megapixels is you know decent for most people my minolta camera where is it <laughs> my minolta camera actually has more megapixels than this this minolta camera has 20 megapixels yep 20 megapixels it has more megapixels but that doesn't equal you know a better camera necessarily when megapixels are really important is when you're gonna blow something up and zoom in on it like if you were gonna create like a big billboard sign or big poster and then you're gonna zoom in on it. You're, you're gonna wanna have higher megapixels because you don't want the details to be lost when you blow it up and it to look kind of blurry, if you know what I mean. This camera records up to 4K, 30 frames per second. I don't really use 4K like that because nobody really watches in 4K. I mean, I know they have 4K TVs and everything, but I don't think most people are watching in 4K. I think most are watching in 1080p right now, but it's nice to have the 4K when you know everything switches over to 4k also like i said before the optical image stabilization is not built into this camera it's actually in the lenses so you're going to probably have to invest in another lens if you want the image stabilization by the way i don't know if i mentioned this this is a mirrorless camera this the autofocus on this camera is contrast based so it's a lot worse than canon's um dual pixel autofocus so basically like it just lags especially when it's in 4k when it's in 1080p it still lags compared to canon's cameras but it catches on a lot quicker than the 4k if autofocus is really really important to you and like a deal bag deal breaker then maybe this camera isn't the right one for you but other than that everything else is superb and fixable overall i would definitely recommend this camera for YouTubers, like beginning beginner YouTubers, vloggers, you know, any kind of YouTube videos you're trying to create because when you're looking for a good camera for your YouTube, it fulfills most of the categories that I consider important, which are video quality, portability, flip screen, autofocus, optical image stabilization. The only one that it doesn't fulfill out of that those five is um autofocus, but the image stabilization kind of it doesn't fulfill that but it is fixable so everything in this camera is pretty much what you're looking for and need for a beginner i forgot to show you guys the app and i just wanted to let you guys see it because that is also a very important part of the camera so i got the app up and running so you can do remote operation from it as you can see um, I'm going to turn the camera up towards me. Ooh, I feel looking good today. So, yeah, you can take a picture. So, I'm going to take a picture from the phone, as you guys just saw. And then you can record a video. Am I recording the video? Yep, okay. You can also transfer your photos and your videos from the phone. Let me see, where is it? 
if you go to home it says transfer image and then it has geotagging the snap movie and a photo collage so it does have a lot of options and i really really like the app portion of this and i recommend the app like so not only do you have the monitor on here but you can also look at your self-recording on your phone you Hi everyone, so this is the test video of me trying the camera. That is the Lumex G7. That is the thigh eye right there. I'm recording with my iPad here as I have been throughout this entire video. That is my phone. And this is the Minolta. So I'm gonna try to get close up to all of them to see how, how well it, you know, focuses and looks close up. Close up? How much detail can you see? You can see all my acne on this one and my oily skin, guys. I feel a little uncomfortable. Thigh eye. iPad. Minolta. And my phone. So can you tell the differences in sound and image? Because guess what? The lighting is the same. We're using the same lighting and everything is pretty much the same. This is what you get out of all the cameras. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, please be sure to like, subscribe, and also comment. Like, after looking at the video footages and the pictures that I've taken with these different devices, do you think that the Panasonic Lumex G7 was worth it? Do you think it actually outperforms all of them? Bye!